Okay, so this is part three of the um, tutorial walkthrough thingamajig for um, Victoria Empire Under the Sun. And what I seem to be doing at the moment is just converting the local populations to uh, craftsmen or clerks. And clerks have the uh, benefit of boosting your uh, your research, but they cost, um, I think it's uh, certain certain resources such as uh, furniture or precious material, uh, precious metals and things. Uh, so if you don't have those and it's not allowing you to um, convert them, then it's probably because you don't have those resources and you need to uh, import them. And you know, and sometimes at the early state in the early stage of the game, there aren't any resources on the world market for you to actually import. So you know, um, strangely enough, uh, in terms of the the machine parts that I was talking about in the last um, section. They were actually uh, strangely readily available in this one. I don't know if it's the fact that I'm playing uh, with revolutions, but it seems um, really uh, it was really quick. Whereas normally, as I said, you you play well into the sort of uh, 40s and sometimes even 50s, and you know there's very few machine parts around to create factories to expand factories. Um, here it didn't seem to be the case. So anyway, I am. Uh, Seems to th things just seem to be ticking along at the moment. So I'll just kind of explain how factories work. Uh, I think I kind of did already, but um, uh, it never hurts to to go over that kind of thing. Um, click on a uh, anywhere on the map, it will come up with a a region. Then you've got all the provinces. Uh, forget about those for the moment. What you want to do is go down, uh, click on the left hand box uh, which has the factories. Then you want to click new factory. Uh, make sure you've got the um, all the um, machine parts, all the the resources to do so. Uh, as I said, match it to the uh, the resources that you have in your country that are readily available. If you have a lot of timber, then you'll want to make sort of wooden products, things like paper and furniture and stuff like that. If you have a lot of metal and things like that, uh, and coal, you might want to make steel or um, or glass or things like that. So um, kind of work out what uh, what's what. Ma uh, put it in places where there's a lot of people um, and Put it in places where you know resources like grain don't really make much money. Uh, so you know, around Saint Petersburg, around the capital where I am, um, there's loads of these uh, provinces with which do deal with grain. Well, you know, I don't mind changing those farmers who are uh, what they're, they're cultivating grain, which doesn't really make much money. Um, I don't mind changing them into like factory workers who are going to. Uh, produce something th which, which is worth more on the world market but once you're making it make sure you're actually selling it as well um, unless you're just making it so that you can um, use it for other goods example would be you might make uh, small arms um, i.e. weapons uh, just so that you can um, there was that transition must have been uh, a little bit later on in the game um, so that you can just increase your mobilization I might create uh, I might have loads of factories for ships um, just so that I can create naval sort of uh, vehicles you know I might not actually want to sell those um, uh, the the produce that I make um, most of the time you will though so um, if you if you do make sure that you you go to that trade screen and you set how much you want to be selling after a certain amount of if you just you don't care about stockpiling it then you can just sell it at you know more than one if you uh, if you do want to stockpile if, you know just have some in reserve you know stick it to um, if you have more than a hundred then you sell it so that you have a stockpile and you also uh, you're selling it once you get past that figure um, at the moment I seem to be sort of going into um, once you have quite a few factories and Russia is a big country it's going to have a lot of uh, space for more factories um, and this is basically what the the main bit of this video is going to be about um, you want to make sure you when it when you expand it and it gives you the message up it's expanded so there's five new places for more workers then you go into the different provinces that are making grain or um, or kind of wool or whatever meat isn't uh, doesn't make very much money either and you go into those provinces i.e. the ones on the left that you see uh, then you click on a worker type unit like a farmer there may be 70,000 of them uh, in smaller countries there'll be fewer obviously and you wanna just click on them and then make them into craftsmen 
which is basically factory workers, and they'll turn from this kind of uh, guy wearing this kind of farmer's outfit into a guy kind of wearing this orange uh, factory kind of craftsman kind of garb, and he's holding a hammer, and um, then you know it's worked. So that's what basically I've been doing for the last while. And I've also been clicking, uh, you might notice that split button, because I've got a lot of you know workers that are like you know more than 40,000. And I split them a lot, and I think it's because I've noticed that they tend to work more efficiently um, when you split them down into smaller units. So at first you might not want to split them up, but um, ultimately you'll get to the point where it, it might, be, uh, might be useful to. At least I do it. You don't have to do it. Um, as I said, there's there's probably no right way of playing this game. Although I'm sure, sure I'll get plenty of messages telling me I'm doing something wrong. But um, you know what? That's that's why I'm doing these videos. Uh, just to just so that anyone who's kind of new to this gets an idea of what what goes on. So, like, um, yeah. As I said, like the the early years is all about getting your economy sorted. Don't start uh, fighting wars. I mean, you will want to check out the different tabs on relations and stuff, and I will talk about that in another review. I'll I'll try and make sure I uh, label that specifically so that you can just uh, skip to that if you've had enough of me talking about factories. But you know, factories are the way to get money in this game. And later on, when you get r railways and stuff, you want to make sure that you're connecting all those ones with uh, factories together. Um, because there is a an impact on the uh, your income once you put in railways and once you put in factories and once you expand them past a certain point um, and so some a lot of factories that right now uh, when you start playing as Russia there's already factories there um, a lot of them aren't actually all that um, profitable and you're gonna have to be looking at the ones that are making the money and saying actually no I could rather just place some people you know, from this glass factory into this uh, steel factory that I've just set up. So uh, you're going to have to make that decision. And in places like uh, Poland here, um, I wasn't actually able to change the population all that much because my political situation was one of um, it, it was basically prejudicial to um, to uh, quote unquote minority groups. So uh, because I couldn't convert many people there because they weren't actually um, ethnically Russian. Uh, what I had to do was just move them from the fabric factory into the more profitable um, steel factory, and I did that by just where where the two factories are, uh, one on top of the other. I just um, clicked the minus one by the fabric factory, and I clicked uh, plus to add them from that to the steel factory. And you, as you just saw, I uh, just went to the um, the military screen and increased my mobilization again. It's something that I'm doing constantly. I mean, you just you just get into the the habit of it. Uh, you got to make sure you got small arms and canned food, as I've probably said numerous times before. But um, uh, and you'll see at the bottom just where the tech is. Yep, new technology developed. Uh, you want to keep an eye on this sort of stuff. It it can be very easy to go months without uh, kind of researching new things. And you know, if you want to get the upper hand, you got to make sure you're uh, researching these things at the beginning look at the economic stuff later on when you're likely to be fighting a war uh, look at the military stuff uh, but at the beginning you want to get as uh, much of a head start over your competitors as uh, as possible you want to have a good buoyant economy before you start starting those wars basically um, you know unless you plan on having a war within the first you know uh, you know first few uh, few minutes of playing the game you know you should be starting off uh, looking at your economy. But um I'm sure I've said that already. Anyway. Um I think the next video I'll probably do will be talking about certain things specifically. So um because I hopefully you've got an idea just from looking at how many times I've been clicking on these icons of what to be doing with your factories. So uh that should be nice and clear for most people. Anyway, um and as I said, yeah, I'll be uh looking at um other things specifically in the later videos so that's me